Hello, everyone. It's great to be here with you today, even though it's virtual. Uh, my name is Priya Reddy, and we are presenting. I'm presenting alongside my colleagues, Isa Siddiqui and Josh Kalapo. Uh, our presentation today is all about taking an active learning approach in an interdisciplinary college while we're now in the era of generative AI um, in higher education. Let's do a quick introduction. So my name is Priya. Um, I have been based in the United Arab Emirates for about 14 years now, teaching in higher education settings. I teach in the general education program at CIS which is a innovative interdisciplinary college at Zayed University. Um, I teach courses like critique and communication and expressive clarity. Uh, Isa, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Priya. Thanks for having us here today. Um, my name is Isa Sabiki, and I'm a faculty member in the College of Interdisciplinary Studies as well. I've been based in the UAE for about five years now. And um, I teach classes mostly around complex systems, uh, creative and critical thinking, as well as strategic learning and growth. Josh? Right. Yeah, and my name is Josh Kalapo. Um, I also am in the College of Interdisciplinary Studies. Um, I've been at Zayed University for about five years now as well. And I teach entrepreneurship and innovation. So, we think it's important for everyone to be on the same page about why an interdisciplinary approach to education can be really beneficial to students and um, really, you know, is an innovative way to be approaching models of higher education now. So, so as you all heard, we all teach in the College of Interdisciplinary Studies and we wanted to give you some pillars of what we are focused on within the college. So first and foremost, um, it is really providing students with this idea of having better critical thinking skills and approaching problems and approaching situations in a way where they're able to develop more sustainable solutions and um, analyze data and decisions in a more creative and diverse way. Uh, so particularly when we think about this in the context of AI, when we know that there is generative AI around, we want to make sure that students have the critical thinking ability to kind of engage with those models or whatever is out there, if they are going to be doing that. The second thing um, that an interdisciplinary education really focuses on is enhancing creativity. So again, um, just thinking about ways in which you can approach a particular situation from multiple perspectives. So knowing that you, know, you can hold multiple ideas and multiple perspectives and really uh, focus on discovering solutions or fo formulating new and innovative ideas through um, interdisciplinary work. And then um, finally, you know, students uh, do learn to interact more effectively through such programs because they are navigating and exploring complex systems, learning what are the um, ways in which complex systems are set around in our world and uh, that also includes kind of networking with others, um, you know, working with other people and resolving ethical dilemmas. Because, you know, when we see in our classes, interdisciplinary classes, even students working on group projects, there is a lot around like resolving ethical dilemmas, finding those, uh, you know, capabilities to work with people who might think differently from them and be approaching uh, things from different uh, angles and different situations. So. I'm going to now pass it on to my colleague, Josh, who will tell us a little bit more about how our classrooms are set up. Yeah, so with our classrooms, um, we have some labs which are you know, joined with the class where we have labs which are in person, then we have kind of this forum online session that we uh, do our lessons from. It is definitely a hybrid approach and there's a lot of active learning that goes on. So when we think of it, you can see here kind of a model of what the classroom will look like. Students have their cameras on and we're able to engage and interact with them. Um, one of the things is that when we have, for any lesson that we do, we have um, le uh, learning outcomes, right? So LOs that we have that are attached to this particular lesson. And it's also spanned across not only one particular course, it could be over three different courses that they're taking at the same time. So there could be context critique that they're doing in two other courses that we're really focusing on in terms of learning outcomes. And so it's very interactive. The other thing is with this platform that we're also using, it's set up in a way that we have 
you know, students writing responses, speaking, uh, you know, sharing their responses with people in the classroom. They have breakout rooms where they're able to work with, you know, different teams, whether it be project-based or individual-based. They have time to kind of engage differently throughout this kind of active learning approach through this kind of lesson plan. Um, and so that's kind of how this kind of uh, forum platform is set up for our students that really have this kind of opportunity for them to really navigate you know, learning online, which is not necessarily what we traditionally think about like a, a Zoom classroom, but really an interactive classroom where students are um, really engaged, where, you know, even for us as faculty, we monitor our talk time, right? So that the students are really engaged into the conversations, engaged into the learning, and it's also a flipped model, right? So the students learn and read the content before they come to class, and then they're then pushed to engage and talk about it and really analyze the information versus us coming to class and us teaching them. All right, so next I will pass it to my colleague Priya. Thank you, Josh. So I know that many of you who are in the classroom or if you're, you know, on a virtual space teaching online, you know, st our students, as our, we are, are inundated with generative AI tools, chat GPT, it's, it's everywhere. And so I think we're all facing that struggle of how to use these tools ethically in a sustainable way that's going to help students to learn and process rather than reach out for the end product and type in that prompt and and hand in that that essay that's come up in in a few seconds so you know it has been a struggle and i just want to briefly share with you um some of the discussion that's been happening with faculty in, in our college and in the wider university. And we've really sort of come up with three areas where we need to approach um, the application of AI ethically. Um, on the bigger level, of course, the institutional level, really thinking of a central policy um, and looking at what other institutions are doing globally as well. So recognizing you know, our context um, thinking about how we can become an AI integrated institution, right? So thinking about where our research needs to be um, driven. So that's an ongoing discussion uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's a complicated one because AI is moving a lot faster, as you know, than, than we are with policy. In the college level, we've set up working groups across different courses, um, and we are running lots of PD sessions for faculty. Faculty are sharing research, um, new information. We're reading a lot, and we're developing policy and guidelines without scaremongering students. So it's teaching students, giving them the tools um, to use AI uh, well. Um, our library has been integral. Um, in this as well, because they have come up with um, tutoring sessions for both faculty and for students, um, developing more sort of uh, prompt generation uh, type uh, of uh, workshops. Um, and, you know, at a course level, I think it's all about choosing the right type of assessment. So thinking about assessing the process rather than the end product, giving students that space to think about the work, apply it in a practical sense, taking that interdisciplinary approach, um, thinking about assessment being maybe more verbal, more reflective. That's been um, suggested by many faculty at the course level. Um, and designing creative, authentic assessments, right? And, and we need time um, to do that, to, do, to design assessments well. So, you know, it's, uh, I just wanted to bring this up because it's such an important um, topic. We're all talking about it. And just, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where this, this goes over the next you know, few months and over the next year. So, yeah, thank you. And these are our email addresses. Please feel free to get in touch should you have any questions or ideas. And our references are here. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Isa and Josh.
Thank you.